Chairman, let me uh, open my time by thanking you and the ranking member for the constructive way in which this committee is proceeding on uh, word of legislation. We often find uh, ourselves uh, at odds on certain issues, um, but I applaud the way in which the committee works in bipartisan fashion on the water resources, and I want to particularly recognize uh, the both of you. Um, Ms. Swallow, one of the things that uh, we see is that the march of progress and innovation brings uh, new materials to the fore, innovative materials, often uh, composite materials. Uh, what is your read on how well the Army Corps engineering manuals and uh, other guidance uh, provide adequate uh, preparation for applicants to be able to use those innovative uh, materials and projects. Is, should that be a continuing focus to try to make sure that the standards that have been in place for concrete and steel and other more traditional materials are updated to include innovative and composite materials? Senator Whitehouse, that's a fantastic question. And, and indeed, we do agree that we need to provide for all agencies to incorporate the use of new materials. Uh, we can't continue to design projects the way we did 50 years ago. We can't afford to do that, and the projects won't um, be sustainable. So we need to figure out ways to um, incentivize development of these new materials and their use of the materials and ensure that they do get into our projects. So that and out-of-date engineering and other guidance, engineering manuals and other guidance create a lag uh, that inhibits the uh, implementation of projects that include those new materials, correct? It, it is natural that the standards and guidelines do have a bit of a lag, but the intention there is to ensure that we're protecting public safety and not implementing them too soon. So we need to make sure that we both incentivize the use of them, but also continue to ensure that they're being safely used. Well, I uh, appreciate that. Um, in Rhode Island, we have a lot of small communities, and I uh, see uh, Mr. Uh, Bullock here uh, representing another coastal state with small uh, communities. Um, I have noted that the Army Corps' flood and coastal storm damage reduction account in the FY19 budget um, is funded at $1.49 billion. Of that $1.49 billion, we have found only $40 million marked for coastal projects. Even in the flood and coastal storm damage reduction account, the ratio of upland and inland projects to coastal projects appears to be about 37 to 1, which does not seem appropriate under virtually any circumstances, but particularly not appropriate when we look at the type of coastal flooding, coastal storm, lousy FEMA mapping, and other challenges that small communities face. What is your comment on that? Senator, I'm going to, I'm going to not to tell you how to do your job or not, but I'm going to yield to my fellow Delawarean to my left, who's a, the expert in this, uh, probably not a good I accept for a that Secretary referral. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pratt. Uh, and I'm not retired from the state of Delaware, but 38 years in the business, uh, and that's why my Secretary of State uh, is, is referring over to me. Uh, we, we, we certainly, from Delaware's standpoint and from the national standpoint, we certainly see the problem with that discrepancy, that, that, that small investment made to the coastline. And I think to answer that, I would, I would put out something I've said to this committee in the past. Uh, how far off, I think, for a point of illustration, how far off we are in the investment and I, and I use the fact that we are depending, in my mind anyway, we, we're depending too much anymore on supplementals to fund coastal restoration work. We're responding, and I certainly see a number of senators. So your recommendation would be that we need to make a stronger focus on coastal restoration we need work to make right a stronger, into the if we took, program. $65 billion was spent for Hurricane Sandy supplemental, $65 billion. And, and of that, let's just say $20, million, 20 billion of that was probably uh, very much directly coastal related in the affected states. We take that number and we say $20 billion over one storm and maybe 25 percent of the co coast of the United States. If we had spent that money for 20 years over the entire nation, that's a billion dollar investment a year to avoid the damages and to avoid the suffering that occurred before we had to pay that for cost of recovery. In my final seconds, let me uh, make the point that Rhode Island has not 
applied under the WIFIA program for some time now. One of the reasons is that the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank is actually easier to work with, uh, doesn't require such a paperwork load up front, and that for smaller projects and for smaller communities, uh, the WIFIA project really is not all that useful. So I hope that as we continue to work our way forward, we can find ways to make the WIFIA uh, program more uh, amenable to uh, smaller projects and smaller communities, because a great number of our coastal communities are smaller communities. We're not all uh, New York City. Thank you. <laughs>